are back with part four of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version, TLV, and we're beginning chapter eight. Assyria will rise to Judah's neck. Then Adonai said to me, take yourself a great tablet and write on it with a man's stylus, Meher Shalel Hajbaz. And what that means is hurry to the spoils. So I took for myself trustworthy witnesses, Uriah the Kohen and Zechariah son of Jebarekiah. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then Adonai said to call, said to call, said to me, call his name Meher Shalal Hajbez. For before the child would have knowledge to cry, my father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be carried away before the king of Assyria. Then Adonai spoke to me further, saying, because of these. Because these people have refused the softly flowing waters of Shiloa, and that's spelled S-H-I-L-O-A-H, and rejoice with Rezin and Ramalia's son, therefore behold, Adonai is bringing on them the waters of the river, mighty and massive, Assyria's king with all his glory. It will rise over all its channels and spill over all its banks. Then it will sweep through Judah, overflow as it passes through reaching even to the neck. So the spread of its wings will be the full breadth of your land. Emmanuel, make an uproar, O peoples, but you will be broken in pieces. Give ear, all you of far countries. Arm yourself, yet be shattered. Arm yourselves, yet be shattered. Take counsel together, but it will amount to nothing. Speak a word, but it will not stand, for God is with us. For this Adonai spoke to me with a strong hand, warning me that I should not walk in the way of these people, saying, Do not say it's a conspiracy about everything that these people call a conspiracy. You must not fear or tremble at what they fear. Adonai Sabaot him will you sanctify and let him be your fear trembling at him he will be a sanctuary but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the house of israel a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of jerusalem many among them will stumble fall and be broken snared and caught bind up the testimony seal the instruction with my disciples i will wait for adonai who is hiding his face from the house of jacob and i will look eagerly for him here I am with the children that Adonai has given me a sign, given me as signs and wonders in Israel from Adonai Sabaot, who dwells on Mount Zion. When they say to you, consult the mediums and necromancers who chirp and mutter, shouldn't a people seek their God? So in other words, he's saying not to do those things. And, and no, we're not supposed to be te- seeking mediums and necromancers for answers. We should be seeking God. Should a people consult the dead on behalf of the living? To Torah and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no light. They will pass this way that are hard pressed and hungry, and it will turn out when they are hungry, they will become enraged and curse their king and their God. Whether they turn their faces upward or look to the earth, behold distress and darkness the gloom of anguish, and they will be driven into darkness. So we need to look at this, um, too. You know, we can see this happening today. You know, people are are not, uh, there's a lot of people that are seeking, they're seeking answers, but they're going in all the wrong wrong directions. They're seeking new age counsel. They're seeking, they're seeking um, fortune tellers and, And this is what they're referring to. They should be seeking God for answers. The Holy Spirit will guide them um, to answers. You don't need to go to to these people who are, you know, and and these people that are mediums and fortune tellers, they're not hearing from God. Um, They're hearing from familiar spirits. And uh, we can more or less say they're hearing from demons, basically. 
So even though they might get an answer right here and there, and, 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 and if you look at what they're saying, you know, not everything is 100%, that's because they're not hearing from the Holy Spirit. And you really don't want to be messing and opening up portals um, such as that because you don't know what you may get and what kind of demons are attached to these people um, as well because they've opened themselves to all kinds of, of demonic presence. And Romans 9, 32 to 33 says, um, well, I'm going to actually read from 31. But Israel, who pursued a Torah of righteousness, did not reach the Torah. Why? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as if it were from works. They stumbled over every. They stumbled over the stone of stumbling, just as as it, as it is written. Behold, I lay in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him shall not be put to shame. And First Peter um, chapter 2, also um, 7 and 8, says, Now the value is for you who keep trusting, but for those who do not trust, the stone which the builders rejected, this one has become the chief cornerstone, and that is Yeshua. And a stone is stumbling in a rock of offense they stumble because they are disobeying the word to this they were also appointed so those are some more um new testament verses that coincide with um with isaiah and the end of chapter eight is a great light in galilee but there is no gloom to her who was in anguish as in time pa time past he treated lightly the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will bring glory by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Now, chapter 9. The people walking in darkness will see a great light upon those dwelling in the land of the shadow of death. Light will shine. You will multiply the nation. You will increase the joy. They will rejoice before you. Like the joy in the harvest as they revel when they divide spoil. For he will break the burdensome yoke and the rod on his shoulder. The war club of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. For every stomping boot, quaking and cloak rolled in blood will be for burning fuel for the fire. Prince of Peace. This is Jesus, Yeshua, and the prediction of Messiah by Isaiah. For unto us the child is born, a son will be given to us, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, my Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and shalom, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it through justice and righteousness from now until forevermore. The zeal of Adonai Sabaot will accomplish this. I'm going to pause this a minute. Yeah, I'm going to back up just a second here. Um, we were reading first in, in um, chapter 8, and this is a reference also to, to those verses, Matthew 4, uh, verses 14, beginning with verses 14. This, is, this was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations, the people sitting in darkness have seen a great light. And those sitting in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. So that actually reflects, again, we, we can actually have reference back to Isaiah when we are reading in Matthew. And Matthew twenty-eight eighteen says, And Yeshua came up to them and spoke to them, saying, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
And when you're looking back here in Isaiah, the government will be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty, Mighty God, my Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. And of course, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In 1 Corinthians um, chapter 15, verses 24, I'm going to take it from 23 to 25, But each in his own order, Messiah the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Messiah, then at the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And we can reflect back into this chat, this beginning part of chapter 9. Again, the government will be upon his shoulder. You know, and, of, and, and continuing on, of the increase of his government in Shalom, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and up, uphold it through justice and righteousness from now until forevermore the zeal of Adonai Zebaot will accomplish this. So the second part of chapter 9 is a warning about defiance. Adonai sent a word to Jacob and it fell upon Israel. All the people will know what Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria say in pride and in, ang in arrogance of heart. The bricks are falling, but we will rebuild with cut stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. So God looked at that as pride and arrogance. And actually, um, I believe Jonathan Kahn was talking about um, that actually being read um, in defiance. Uh, when we had 9-11, and that was a big no-no to do to read that first, because that is actually bringing um, judgment on on yourself. Um, because, I mean, to be prideful and arrogant um, is not something God uh, blesses. The mistake of pride um, is, you know, a, a real bad choice. And actually, when we think about, again, who was prideful, and that was um, the devil when he was Lucifer. Therefore, Adonai raises up Rezin's adversaries against them and spurs on his enemies, the Arameans from the east and the Philistines from the west. They will devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, yet his hand is still outstretched. Yet the people will not turn back to the one who strikes them, nor will they seek Adonai Sabaoth. So Adonai will cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and bulrush in a single day. The elder and the man of rank, he is the head. The prophet who teaches falsehood, he is the tail. The leaders of his of this people lead them astray. Those they miss those they mislead are swallowed up. Therefore, Adonai will have no joy in their young men, nor will he have compassion on their orphans and widows, for everyone is ungodly and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks foolishness. For all this, his anger is not turned away, yet his hand is still outstretched, for his wickedness burns like a fire and consumes like consumes the briars and thorns. It, kin it kindles the thickets of the forest, so they roll up in a column of smoke. By the wrath of Adonai Sabaoth is the land burnt up. The people are as fuel for the fire. No one spares his brother. One grabs with the right hand, but he is, but is hungry and eats with the left hand, but is not satisfied. Everyone will eat the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh will devour Ephraim and Ephraim Manasseh. Both are against Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away, yet his hand is outstretched. Chapter 10, Oi to Unjust Legislators. And the word, I've been saying that a lot, Oi, O-Y, actually means woe. Oi to those enacting unjust 
decrees and recording corrupt legislation to deprive the helpless of justice and rob the rights of the poor of my people. Boy, doesn't that sound familiar to today? <laughs> how corrupt has our government been uh, for how many years? Uh, corrupt legislators and depriving the people of their rights so that widows may be, may be their spoil and orphans their prey. What will you do in the day of visitation when desolation comes from afar? To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your wealth? Well, this is a warning to some of the... Wow, if this isn't like a, <laughs> relevant to today, to the evil that is going on today and to those committing the evil, uh, this is a warning to them uh, because God will definitely judge them and judge them mightily. One can crouch among the captives or collapse among the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away, yet his hand is still outstretched. You know, and we can look at this, the, the corruption of government officials today and all that is going on, you know, and, you know, all that's involved in the wicked acts that are being done. God sees everything. If they he, they can't they can't hide this from God. They may be able to hide this from people, um, but God is actually going to expose the evilness, and He has been actually exposing slowly but surely. It's coming out um, some of the evil wickedness that is going on, and and a lot of people are waking up as a result. And there are people coming to God, and to God be the glory. Um, that more people wake up and, and the scales fall off their eyes and they repent and come to salvation. Assyria, the rod. Oi, to Assyria, the rod of my anger, the club in their hand is my indignation. I am sending it against an ungodly nation. Now, this was the northern kingdom that um, was being told they were going to, you know, Assyria was coming for them. And against the people of my fury, I am commissioning it to take spoil and plunder, to trample them down like mud in the streets. Yet, that is not what Assyria intends, nor is that what he is thinking about. Rather, his heart is to destroy and to cut down nations, only a few. For he says, aren't all my princess kings? Isn't Calno like Car Carchemish? Isn't Hamath like Arpad? Isn't Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has reached the kingdoms of the idols with more graven image than Jerusalem and Samaria, as I've done to Samaria and her idols, won't I do to Jerusalem and her idols? Therefore, it will come to pass, when Adonai finishes all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria, in the glorifying of his haughty eyes. For he said, By the strength of my own hand I've done it, and my own wisdom, for I am shrewd. I abolish the borders of peoples and plundered their treasures. As a mighty one I cast down inhabitants, my hand found the riches of the peoples at, as a nest, like gathering forsaken eggs. I have gathered the entire earth, not a wing fluttered, not a not a beak opened or chirped. Should the axe boast against the one who chops with it? Should the saw magnify itself against the one who wields it? It would be like a rod waving the one who lifts it. Or like a staff hoisting up the one who is who is not wood. Therefore will the Lord Adonai Sevaot send weakness among his fat ones under its glory he will kindle a burning like a blazing fire, so the light of Israel would, will become a fire and its holy one a flame. He will burn and consume its thorns and briars in one day, both the glory of his forest and his fruitful field. He will consume both soul and body. It will be like a sick man wasting away the remnant of the trees of his forest. It will be so few a child could record them. So this is the destruction coming coming onto the land. Um, I just want to mention here, and we're going to see this um, later when we read Daniel um, with Nebuchadnezzar. Um, 
the king of Assyria uh, was bragging basically that, you know, actually God raised up, um, actually called, um, signaled for Assyria. To, he rose them up against the northern kingdom um, as judgment. Um, so it wasn't by his own strength of his own hand that he was able to do anything. It was because God allowed him to do it. Um, and we're going to see this also with Nebuchadnezzar. Um, when he made Nebuchadnezzar to be like a wild animal for like seven years because he was so prideful and haughty and was like bragging about his kingdom that he made. Well, no, God allowed him to do that. Um, both of these kings actually did not give God credit for anything. So we need to be, be giving God the glory for all that we have. Um, it, it is not through our means. It's through um, the doors that he opens for us that we have success. It's, it's for whatever um, that we achieve. It's those, you know, God brings that to us. And we need to give praise and glory and honor to God the Father who allows these things to come to us and not think that, you know, we're, you know, up. We're, we're all that, you know what I mean? Um, and this is what pride does. Um, and it can really get corrupt, you know, can corrupt people. Um, so, um, so that's a little word on that. A remnant will return. Yet it will come about in that day that the remnant of Israel, those of the house of Jacob who escaped will never again depend on the one who struck them down, but will depend upon Adonai, the Holy One of Israel in truth. A remnant will return, even the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty mighty God. For though your people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Now this is, we're talking about the captivity of, ba of Babylon, um, because um there was a remnant 70 years later after they had gone into captivity through King Cyrus that did return to Jerusalem. For though your people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction has been decreed. Justice overflows for complete destruction as decreed with Adonai Sab Elohai Sabaot make throughout the whole land. Therefore, Thus says Adonai Elohai Sabaoth, O my people dwelling in Zion, do not be afraid of Assyria. Though he strike you with the war club and lift up his rod against you as Egypt did. For in a very little while, my indignation against you will be spent and my anger will turn to their destruction. Adonai Sabaoth will stir up against him a scourge as in the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. As his staff was over the, the sea, so he will lift it up as he did in Egypt. In that day, his burden will be taken off your shoulder and his yoke off your neck. Indeed, the yoke will be broken because of fatness. And I'm going to pause it here and come back with the next part and we'll finish up chapter 10.